Hey guys, I just wanted to show you something I've been working on lately. Um, I've been wanting to have a 114 scale uh, skid steer for a while. So, um, so I made one. I found this guy on YouTube just looking around for a skid steer. Um, I was going to convert another toy, another brooder one, but this one intrigued me because it was 114 scale and and having three 3D, I mean two 3D printers, sorry, um, I figure, well, I can accomplish that. This doesn't seem like it'd be that hard to do. And it wasn't. It was actually a pretty fun little project. But I will actually post a link to the guy on my in the description. Because I think um, if you have a 3D printer, you don't want to spend the money on a $1,000 RC skid steer. You know, I think I did this without actually sitting down and figuring out. I think I did the whole project under 150 bucks. But again, without sitting down and figuring out and 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 it also depends on what parts you use or what quality they are because I'm going to go into a couple things that I did wrong, not the plans or the the 3D print files. But anyway, this is how this show you how it works. So it drives like they always, you know, like they should. And of course, the arm works. And again, I don't want to go into is it pretty strong? Is it a uh, is it a dig worthy or anything like that? Because again, that comes down to the parts that you actually uh, buy for it. But in my little version. It actually will dig and steer and drive pretty good in the dirt. But so now that you see it, seen it work, let's talk about it a little bit. Inside, inside the model, you have all your electronics, and you're not going to be able to see anything in there. But I just want to show you where it is. Here's a little battery box uh, tray up here, and the battery fits in there pretty good. You can use that. Uh, I'm using a, a 1500 milliamp uh, two cell lipo, but I was actually thinking about if I could find stronger uh, speed controllers, maybe running a small 3S lipo in there. But as far as um, as far as parts goes, these are two. Um, linear actuators and don't quote me on the size but I think they're 50 millimeter um, there's two worm gear motors that drive that drive the tracks this the servo that controls the bucket of course is the uh, old tried and true Amazon uh, 20 kilogram metal gear servos those are really good and they're really cheap i mean they're like 18 bucks and they last forever they're pretty quick i mean it you know if it was a regular non-converted to a 360 servo it's actually pretty quick um so that's the um that's the movements and of course it's got the lights and the the brooder driver she's in there i've had her for a while um, the tracks come from a brooder, uh, Delta loader. And that's about as much as I can say about the construction of it. You can check out his video. He goes into greater detail about it and how everything works and how it puts together. Um, he gives you a couple extra attachments. Like I made the fork attachment for it and the bucket with teeth. He also gives you a snow plow, but I live in Florida, so I, I'm, I'll just be wasting uh, filament if I printed that out. And, of course, again, it's dirty, so it shows you I've been using it. And it does do a pretty good job. I'm really happy with it. Now, there are some caveats to it. He says to um, run it, uh, to print everything at 50 at 50% 50 infill. I printed everything at 100. I mean, it's overkill, but I've feel that you know it's plastic and it's 3d printed plastic it really needs to be tough and my original plans were to make this hydraulic 
and you probably could because the hydro you know you can get some small hydraulics for example here's another small vehicle that i had it's a bruder uh mini excavator but you can see how small the actual hydraulics are so you can probably get them in there if you really wanted to but I didn't want to go through all that trouble. I wanted to play quicker than I wanted to actually build. But yeah, that's the loader. That's what I've been working on for a while. And I think I even have a short of uh, showing this thing actually being printed. And one thing too, originally this was going to be black and, and orange. But when I sanded the the orange, it got really dull and... It's kind of like how the bucket looks, so I decided just to uh, paint it like the real one. The little decals, um, this one's not correct, but it looks cool, so I'm not worried about it. But the little decals I did on, on a Cricut, and yeah, the only thing I had problem with was the tracks. Um, you have to get a Bruder Delta loader if you can find one, because I don't think they're uh, no longer just making the tracks i think you have to buy the toy to get the tracks and the toy is like 30 bucks so it's kind of like uh do i want to buy something for that much just to just to steal the tracks or or do i want to try to build something and originally i made some tracks out of some old tires and they worked pretty good but the problem that i was having was i couldn't get the um uh, the tracks from coming off of this uh the top sprocket here and i couldn't figure out a way to make a guide so it would work with this front spock sprocket and the little guide wheels without designing something completely new uh myself and i didn't really want to go through all that so yeah so i bit the bullet and bought the little tracks and well the, i mean the delta loader but yeah that's the video hope you guys like it please subscribe and uh Look out in the next couple of weeks for my next video because from the same designer on um, on YouTube, he has a bulldozer. And he just posted his uh, first video of the bulldozer. So I bought that. And, yeah, it, you know, I think it's going to be a neat project. And price-wise, this file was $32, I think, in American money. His stuff is in euros. But I think it was $32 in U.S. dollars. And the... Uh, bulldozer was 50 bucks in us dollars and you know that might seem like a lot for a 3d printer file but in the long run it's really not because you figure how much would this would have cost if you would have bought it brand new you know um a lot of the stuff in the construction part of the rc hobby is really expensive and to me a lot of times and it's just just my personal opinion but to me a lot of times it's expensive just because of the popularity. It's not expensive because of uh, what it's made out of and what it could be and what it does. A lot of times I think it's expensive just because of the popularity since it's not as popular and more of a boutique style of uh, of uh, aspect of the RC hobby. I think they get away a lot of times with giving you, for example, a semi truck for $1,000 where you can get a Tamiya one for 300 bucks and, and it looks just as good, just as tough, lasts you forever. And with an extra maybe two two or 300 bucks the most, convert it to whatever you bought for $1,000. So, you know, I'm thinking the same thing. And it's the same thing with these. I mean, and granted, there's a lot of technology that goes into the uh, and engineering that goes into the construction stuff. But... Yeah, whatever. That's a different part of the story in a different video altogether. Um, but yeah, you guys tell me what you think and go out and support this guy. He's actually, like I said, it's actually a neat little thing. And it was a fun little build. I built it. I think the thing that took it the longest for me to do was trying to find the tracks. The cylinders, I modified. So that's, again, another story. Matter of fact, you can see me in a process of modifying two more. 
from Amazon. These are the little Amazon ones. And one of the problems I have with everything on Amazon, everything that has to do with gear drives and gear motors and gear whatever and gear boxes and gears in general, they never give you the exact um, the exact specs. They never tell you how much stuff actually is. And when they tell you something, a lot of times it's not true. Like they said that these are uh, 100 RPM gear motors with uh, 24 ounces of, uh, of, of power, of torque. I can actually, I can stop it. So, yeah, that's not 20 pounds of torque. <laughs> you know? Granted, this one was trying to turn, but still, I can stop it. So that's not 20 pounds of torque. Luckily, this guy right here is not that, that heavy. And that was the other reason why I'm thinking about doing in twelve uh, with a uh, 11 volt battery because these are actually rated for 12 volts, so that might also be a problem. But anyway, before I go into a, a three hour long video over it, tell me what you think and thanks again. See you soon.